So in this video, we're going to look at an example of maximizing utility uh, given a budget constraint for perfect substitute utility function. Now here's our utility function, and here is our budget constraint. And we're just going to graph this to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, and so we'll solve for Q2, just to make this easier to graph. And we're going to graph the budget constraint first. So 30 minus 3Q1, and then Q2 equals 15 minus 3 over 2Q1. So we can graph that over here. 15 is our y-intercept, and 10 will be our x-intercept. And we can connect these just with a straight line, like all our budget equations. And so we know we can afford anything closer to the origin, including this line. We want to find an indifference curve that uh, is, is part of this area. Um, so we can afford it, but we want to find the one that gives us the most utility. And so we know uh, indifference curves farthest from the origin are the ones that give us the most utility. So we'll just uh, graph some of these and see uh, which uh, combination of Q1 and Q2 give us the best utility. So we'll solve for Q2 just to make this easier to graph again. And it equals u minus q1. q2 equals u over 2 minus q1 over 2. And so the slope of this indifference curve is going to be negative 1 half. We can just draw several indifference curves here, uh, each with slope negative 1 half. And uh, we don't need to know the utility because we're just uh, experimenting, but we can keep drawing them. They'll all have the same slope, negative one half. And so we see that this last indifference curve, even though it goes off of the x-axis, it touches the budget constraint at this point, uh, 0, 15. So if we buy 15 units of uh, Q2, we can reach this third indifference curve, which is higher than the second indifference curve or the first indifference curve we've drawn. So uh, the ideal situation for us will be buying 15 units of good 2.